Thanks for joining us on Crime Watch. I'm Ivy Kano. Relief has come the way of residents of Ogere Remole community in Ogun State following the arrest of Samuel Dosumu, also known as Patan, who later died from gunshot wounds for months while his reign of terror lasted. Dosumu proved himself capable of not only being the number one public enemy, his passion for activities of the underworld covered virtually every ramification of crime. Now, by the time the police traced him to his forest hideout, scores of death were directly linked to the man who showed off his craving for blood even on social media. Call him a monster, a beast, and a killer, and you may not be out of place. Samuel Dosumu, a young man known as Patan in Ogiri Remo community, where his parents lived for many years, later became a terror and killed seven persons in circumstances that beat the imagination. It caused panic in the land and many of the residents fled the community. The police launched a major search and declared him wanted. Despite that, the killer struck again and killed a nursing mother and our neighbor on different days. Victims' families say they are still mourning. My daughter le, le, uh, called me that, Daddy, 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 Spartan have caught mommy. All my, all my mind that maybe she call, uh, she uh, uh, Spartan caught him hand or leg. So after I reach, I come to house, and I see my wife has already. Die. As in, is he like someone am in my heart? Because it's very painful that I lost my dad at this age. Because of the load is much on me. It's very much on me. With the multiple killings, the big question among residents of Ogun State was, who was Patton and why was he killing? For some, he was no more than a cultist. Why others described him as a drug addict who had been affected by the influence of the drugs, but the police say his style of operation suggested otherwise. You see how he cleared a large portion and uh, tactically leaving behind a, 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 mast, a, mast, a mast, dug some trenches around him to evade or to dodge arrest and had all offensive weapons with him, bottles, cutlasses. He's not a madman. He's not a madman. He's not a madman. A quick check on his Facebook page suggests that he may have belonged to a secret court and may have suffered from some form of psychological disorder. For more than a year, he filled this war with writings concerning death and violence. Aside from that, he expressed his mind on the walls of different uncompleted buildings he used as hideouts before he finally relocated to the forest. The police team, which include the commander of the Special anti robbery Squad in Ogun State, Tijani Mohamed, the divisional police officer at Ogiri, and other senior officers of the command, headed by the commissioner of police, combed the forest for days without success until their efforts paid off through the use of technology. We were able to have a pinpoint uh, location of where he was hiding in the bush, and we engaged him. Uh, he broke bottles again, drew the cutlasses, the cutlasses in the, uh, the vehicle there in case you want to see it, the one he had been using to hurt people to death. Then, of course, we replied. Uh, we maimed him on the leg. Unfortunately, uh, it turned out, to be, uh, turned out to be a fatal injury. So that's how we uh, were able to arrest him. Items found at his den in the forest include a gas cylinder, plantain, cooking pot, jerry cans, sim packs, among others. TVC News paid a visit to his family house at Ogiri, but nobody was available to comment and residents were not willing to talk on camera. Those who spoke off camera say his father had died and his mother fled due to his evil enterprise. Unfortunately, none of them was able to confirm if he was suffering from any form of psychological problems, but they confirmed that he was a cultist and used illegal drugs. Wow. 
Luck has run out of a four-member gang of kidnappers in River State. The gang specializing in kidnapping for ransom met their Waterloo after one of their victims died from injuries sustained from torture while in captivity. And despite the payment of 1.2 million naira ransom. Now the death of 65-year-old Isokrari Braid was the propelling force for the police to move in on the kidnappers. The events of the 8th of August 2020 are still fresh in the memory of Beatrice Braid. It was the day kidnappers attacked her family house in Diobo, Port Harcourt and gunned down her husband's younger brother, David Braid. Afterwards, they escaped, taking her husband, Sokari Braid, captive, even though she was the original target. The kidnappers later demanded a 20 million naira ransom, but were paid 1.2 million naira. 65-year-old Sokari Braid was released but died 24 hours later due to injuries allegedly inflicted on him by the gang. They keep him for their custody 11 days. I begged them with 500,000. From there I begged them 1.2. They collect the money on Tuesday. They bring out my husband on Wednesday. Under uh, Andoni Bridge, that between them and Ogoni. Under the bridge, and then go keep my husband. Two out of the four suspects are relatives of the family. Like I can carry one man go. Um, Obio's father. I can't say, but that man will carry. Not saying I'm in love with that. He say I'm making the call me. Ah, so okay, we are not carry the man. Go inside and they for Ogoni. We recovered the man, took him to the hospital. He made a few speeches before he finally gave up the ghost in the hospital. But the clue he gave to us was what led to the arrest of the man who went to deliver the ransom. Unknown to him, that man has been working with him. In a related development, the Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 16, Austin Nagbolaho, is pleased with the successes recorded by the police in River State. During his visit to the state command's headquarters, he assured that the challenges of manpower would soon be addressed. As soon as men are recruited and trained, every state of the command, as it has been done in the last two recruitments, the people that are produced from here for the training are also sent back. I'm sure that will cushion your challenge of uh, manpower. AIG Agbonaho oversees one of the newest police zones comprising Rivers and Bayelsa Police Commands. Border communities in the northern part of Nigeria and neighboring Niger Republic are attracting international attention. Militants are overrunning communities, killing and maiming with the use of sophisticated arms. This development has forced the Prime Minister of Niger Republic to meet with the Governor of Zamfara with a few to finding lasting solution to the problem. Activities of armed bandits in border communities of Niger Republic and some states of Nigeria's Northwest is attracting international attention. Niger Republic has had its share of insecurity in recent times. It prompts the Nigerian Prime Minister Brigitte Rafini to pay a visit to Zamfara State where he meets with Governor Bello Matawali. He is worried at the influence of weapons from Libya into both Nigeria and Niger due to porous borders. Brege Rafini, who spoke through an interpreter, says this has contributed to attacks on border communities and other parts of the northwest region. The security issue concerns all the uh, equal space. We are working on this to see how to solve this problem. Uh, you know, it's very difficult. The border of the Niger and Nigeria, they are very long, it's a very large border. So. The extent of gold for small arms by bandits who double as illegal miners is the subject for this course. The Zamfara state governor, Bello Matawali, reaffirms the determination of his administration to rid the state of any form of crime. He says, he is willing to collaborate with the Nigerian government to beef up security at border entry and communities. Matawale donated five Hilux vehicles to strengthen the joint border patrol aimed at curtailing the importation of arms from other countries. 
We need to share uh, intelligence between the Nigerian public security and Nigerian security. And uh, as a state governor, I'm going to support the security of Nigeria. In fact, I pledge uh, five vehicles for them so that they can be able to be monitoring the uh, border. So the Nigerian state government and the Nigerian public are going to have a partnership so that we can see how to diversify, uh, particularly in the mining sector. The two leaders commit to safeguarding border entries while calling on citizens to assist security operatives with information to bring a lasting solution to the incessant attacks on communities. The visit by the Nigerian Prime Minister, apart from security matters, is to further boost bilateral relations with the Zanfara State government to boost mining and other commercial activities. The negative impact of illicit arms trafficking in Nigeria can be said to be the root of insecurity in the country, accounting for increasing violence and mass killings. Security experts are saying border security management is strategic at this time as Nigeria's porous borders are not only paving way for free flow of arms in and out of the country, but has made it the epicenter of internationalized organized crimes on the continent. That will be when we come back. The proliferation of illicit and small arms is perhaps the biggest challenge facing the West African continent at the moment. This is not unconnected to the crisis in Libya and Mali that has seen arms smuggled into other parts of the continent, including Nigeria. Research shows that Nigeria currently accounts for 70% of illegal weapons in West Africa. Just recently, Zamfara state governor attributed the proliferation of arms in the state to the fact that foreigners pay for gold with arms. The Inspector General of Police has ordered a mop-up of illicit arms across the country as well as prosecute those in possession of them. I had a chat with security expert Dixon Osage. He says Nigeria's porous borders is the nation's Achilles heel in the fight against insecurity and arms proliferation. When we talk about border security, it's solely the responsibility of uh, uh, Nigerian immigration. But when we experience internal or external aggression or external threats, then that's where the Nigerian uh, military comes to play because the sole objective of the Nigerian military is the uh, protection of the territorial integrity of our great nation. So when we talk about border security, it's putting an application in place uh, to prevent uh, unwanted and uh, 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 proliferation of arms into, the great, into our great nation, Nigeria. So uh, for me, uh, the difference here is that when you talk about border security and uh, 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 security of our national borders, they, are, they, are this, they, mean, they mean the same thing. But uh, the border security on its own uh, is putting an application in place. For the fact that our border is closed does not mean uh, the, our border is secured. You know, uh, border closure does not classify the safe nation. Uh, when the border was open, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, illegal routes, you know, where uh, irregular, irregular migrants usually, uh, you know, pass through with the, uh, with the arms and ammunition. Uh, because we have two type of uh, 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 people plying our borders, the regular citizens or irregular visitors. So what we need to do is to have a holistic border security. Because uh, when we look at America, for example, America is 10 times the size of Nigeria. America is about 9.8 million square kilometers, while Nigeria is about 923,000 square kilometers. And America has a very good and resounding border security. So what has happened all this year is because of the, uh, let me say, uh, capable of uh, uh, an absent guardian in respect of our border security. So uh, what I would advise the Nigerian government to do is to, uh, you know, multiply the immigration service. As of now, immigration is having about... Uh, 35,000 men governing a nation of this magnitude. That is, that is, that is, that is wrong. So I will advise the federal government to like, you know, improve this, uh, the strength of the Nigerian immigration, then uh, get the Nigerian immigration a lot of drones. Then we should look into border security intensively uh, because uh, you can't just uh, allow all this to happen because if we don't protect our borders, uh, Nigeria will be, will, will, be, will, be, will, be, will be consumed by this uh, criminal element taking the our vulnerability of our security strategies and acting on that vulnerability. So none of them will want to come through the uh, legal route. They will definitely want to pass through the illegal route. Thereby, we classify them as irregular migrants. So our government must project our security apparatus in place. We have a, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of CCTV, have a lot of uh, drones that is going to govern the space. Because what Americans do is, is if you are approaching any American border, they will sense it from their command and control center. 
so we should build a command and control center that will take care of our national borders so that when any threat is being perceived we will be able to uh, get that threat and respond immediately What we need to do now, presently, because uh, as it is, our borders are not protected. Uh, what the government needs to do is to get more helicopters uh, that are going to, uh, you know, carry out a kind of border patrol. We need intensive border patrol now. So when we have an, a, a lot of helicopters in from, our, from all the zones we've mentioned, uh, those, these helicopters will carry out what we call psychological deterrence measures. Because when you perceive that you are being watched, is going to it kind of reduce the speed of insecurity. So what we need to do is to have a lot of uh, border patrol, a lot of uh, uh, drones, a lot of helicopters that will be patrolling our borderline areas, especially those borderline areas that have been marked as a hotspot. Before you carry out this patrol, you need to carry out a risk assessment of those borders. When you carry out a risk assessment of those borders, then you ascertain where the threat is coming from. Then when you ascertain where the threat is coming from, we will now project our security measures in those areas because we cannot definitely put on a, a border patrol or helicopter or drone mechanism all over our borders. You need to carry out a risk assessment. So from that risk assessment, you'll be able to ascertain where the threat is coming from. Then project more uh, security application in that route so that we'll be able to curtail this crime in progress. Because there are two ways to curtail crime. You curtail crime in progress, you stop crime or you go after crime. So what we need to do is to curtail crime in progress and prevent uh, this criminal element uh, in taking an opportunity of our, of, of our borders. Uh, Counterintelligence, and just what we call intelligence gantry and counterintelligence. Counterintelligence is a process whereby your enemy is hitting hard on you not to get intelligence from them. You know, for example, I want to get intelligence about uh, uh, the Boko Haram uh, operations in the Northeast. And the Boko Haram uh, 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 group or uh, 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 army themselves have an effective counterintelligence mechanism. That is to say that I cannot hit on them or get information from them. That is, they have a good protection. They, they protected their own information. So now, when we talk about uh, intelligence gathering, uh, we have the human intelligence gathering. Open source image is intelligence gathering. Like, for example, if terrorists want to get information from, from the media, they will tune into TVC, channel 418, and they will listen to what's happening and understand what the government are planning to do. That is what we call open source intelligence. They will talk, what about human source intelligence? It's hearing from you and I. You know, maybe you have a friend or a girlfriend in the enemy's camp, and the, enemy, the, the, the girl begins to tell you what uh, their people are trying to plan. That is what we call human intelligence. Then the military needs to also look at signal intelligence. That's what we call SIGMIT. Signal intelligence is hitting into the technological uh, uh, network of, the, of these insurgents because there's a way they, they operate in recruiting their men. We call it dark network. Do you think they just come to the town and start enrolling people? They have a network they used to employ it and they have, they have their own communication channel. So the military needs to hit into that communication channel so that they can be able to break uh, in and get uh, more intelligence to carry out a successful attack against these guys. If you don't have a strong intelligence network, Telling me, telling you the truth, you are going to fight till eternity. Intelligence is one of the bedrock to the success of any given war. Now let's bring you some other crime news. Dar es Salaam is a terrorist group that has been terrorized in the north central region and other states in the north for more than eight years. Activities of the group became more prominent in the last seven months in Nasra State and other neighboring states in the north central. The group has been involved in killings, kidnapping for ransom, adoption for slavery and sex wives, cattle rustling along the Okene Lokoja and Abajitoto Road. The acts have a semblance with activities of the notorious Boko Haram terrorists that has been terrorizing the country for more than a decade. It is as a result of this that the Nigeria Army Force Special Forces Command, in a joint operation with Rice Stroke, embarked on an operation codenamed Operation Nutcracker to clear Ugia Forest, Panda Forest, Utu Forest, and contagious hills in Nasra State. The operation yielded fruit as captives 
and family members of terrorists were captured alongside arms and ammunition of the group. They are now being handed over to their various state governments to be rehabilitated and reintegrated into the society. I therefore present to you this captured 778 women of the terrorists that emanated from 17 states of the nation who have decided to terrorize this nation as you can see. I am to add that these women and children are the real terrorists as they are the people that indoctrinate newly kidnapped women and children and they are the bankers of the spoils of kidnapping and armed robbery acts of their husbands. The National State Government, Kogi and Ninja were at hand to receive the captives for rehabilitation and reintegration into the society. I want to request that those of them on the run should please come out, surrender their arms and surrender themselves to the armed forces because we need peace in this country. We are here by special grace of God without wasting of any time to taking over all those that were numbering and also assigned to our state. We also, we have already made an arrangement that on the arrival we are going to profiling them, ask them questions, where are they coming from, their various local government, and also how to make sure we send them back to their various local government. So far, only Niger, Kogi and Nashua states have come to receive these captives back to their states of origin. The Department of State Security Services in the state is expected to facilitate the return of the remaining captives back to their states of origin. Rape is one of the fastest rising violent crimes in Nigeria. Here are some tips to prevent rape. Avoid unsafe situations and strangers. If you are being followed, go to the nearest police station or any place with several people. Avoid walking alone. Walk with someone in areas where other people are near. Stay away from dark alleys, bushes and entryways. Flee if you are in a potentially dangerous situation. Yell or scream to attract attention. You can carry a whistle that will make a loud noise. Engage in passive resistance by talking your way out of the situation or active resistance by reacting to startle your attacker. Don't allow a stranger inside your home use the telephone. Leave the outside lights on at night and in more than one room. And that's our program today. Thanks for watching. You can send in eyewitness pictures and videos to our email address and social media handles. It's coming up on your screen now. I'm Ivy Kano. I'll be back same time next week. Till then, do have a crime-free week.